So I want to go ahead and I want to call your attention to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, a very familiar passage of scripture, and I'm going to dissect that portion of scripture. Uh, I, I really sense something very strong in my life tonight. Uh, I hope it lingers until I get on a plane headed back because I got to work while I'm here. So the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 2 is where I'll start reading. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 2. Verse 1 reads this way out of the New King James Version Bible. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. Father, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you for all that you are. Father, we thank you for uh, what you're doing in advance. God, we're just going to walk out tonight what you've already done. Father, we thank you for your presence that's so strong and so poised in this place, God, that we can't do anything without you. Father, this entire atmosphere is subject to the father and mother of this house. Therefore, I yield myself to that same anointing, God, and therefore you will bless this great people and those who are streaming because your anointing is fresh upon this house. God, we are now keeping the faith. We won't let go of faith. Everything we do tonight is by faith. So we're careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Go ahead and take your seats. Oh, y'all already sitting down. So that means I got to get you back up sometime during the service. But it, it is an awesome uh, privilege to be here and, and we're focusing in on keeping the faith arise. And I want to talk to you about a few things. Don't preach ahead of me, okay? Don't preach ahead of me. You'll do yourself an injustice if you preach ahead of me. You will miss the points that are going to transform your life tonight. So don't preach ahead of me. Just stay with me just for a moment. They call me zero to 60. In Africa, I'm zero to 100. So I want to read the same scripture out of the Message Bible. I want to see, read the same scripture out of the Message Bible. Out of the Message Bible, it says this in Hebrews 11, verse 1. The fundamental fact of existence is that this truth or this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we cannot see. Verse 2, the act of faith is what distinguishes or distinguish our ancestors, set them above the crowd. That's absolutely powerful. It opens up something much more uh, important for our lives at this point in our lives. So I want to I take you through a few things that, that I feel like are very important. I want to give you the definition of fundamental. The definition of fundamental is uh, being an essential part. So if we say back in verse 1 of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God. So if it's fundamental, it's an essential part. So if it's, an, if it's an essential part, it doesn't matter if you're a preacher, minister, businessman, entrepreneur, it, a housewife. It doesn't matter. Laborer. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what land you come from. It's essential. So it's essential in the States. It's essential in South Africa. So if it'll work for us in the States, it'll work for us in South Africa. I don't expect faith to leave me because I'm in South Africa. I expect faith to work for me in South Africa the same way it works for me in Birmingham, Alabama. So if it's essential, I'm going to use it in every part of my life. I am not going to exclude the essential faith that I need to live out life because my life is not worth living without faith. Stay with me here. Stay with me. It also says in the Message Bible, it uses the word handle, handle. That which may be held, seized, or grabbed. I believe many things that we're believing God for and we're trusting God for, we have no handle on it. But what we're going to do tonight is we're going to put a handle on your miracle. 
I said, we're going to put a handle on your miracle. I watched this, this podium on last night. It's beautiful. Next time you come, I may have one like this. But it has no handles on it. So if I was, I'm not going to pull on it. If I was to pull on it, my hands would begin to slide and slip because there is no handle on it. There's been some things going on in your life and you've been believing for some things, but faith is a handle on your blessing and the thing that you're believing for all we're doing is building your faith to the place to where what you're believing for now has handles and it's not going to slip through your hands anymore and I need some interaction from the church and I, I like to say tell your neighbor this I want you to tell your neighbors what I'm believing for has handles on it now which means Come on, don't be afraid, which means I am going to get my blessing in less than 24 hours. All that happened with Pastor Nishin on yesterday, when he was hearing the message, there was so much faith in the atmosphere that handles were placed on the cell of his house. So when handles were placed on the cell of his house, his house had to sell because handles were on it because he pulled it out of the invisible ram into the visible ram. When such a thing, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. I told you, I'll go from zero to 100 when I'm in Africa. I'll slow down in the States, but I don't know. There's somebody out there that's been believing God for something for a long time. I came to tell you tonight, you're in the right atmosphere. You're in the right right church you're under the right leadership that right now handles are being placed on your miracle and I don't care what the devil said I don't care what religion said I don't care what the doctor said I don't care what the financial advisor said you gonna get your miracle tonight stay with me don't go too fast slow down slow down faith is trust in God. Faith is trust in God. I know you can give me a whole lot of promises, but faith is trust in God. Many times people fail you so that you will trust in God. It's not that they didn't want to. It's not that they didn't plan to, but God needed you to have more confidence in him than in someone else. So sometimes on their best day, their strongest day, their day that's filled with the most integrity, they still may fail you. But God will never fail you when you put your trust in him. Now, I want to talk to you because we, we use a, a religious faith, which is really not trust in God. Because when you trust God, your attitude changes from the inside out. I don't see it with my physical eyes, but I see it on the inside, and I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. I'm going to shout right now. So understand, faith is trust in God. When we preach a message, we're preaching a message so that you would trust in God. I have another message that I'll possibly preach while I'm here. It's, it's, it's one message that, that will help you to better understand that God wants to do something for you. So when we use this term, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you want your faith to grow, you have to be intentional. I don't want to preach it ahead of time. When you come into a setting like this, you can't be distracted. When you come into a setting like this, you have to tell your neighbor, quiet down, I'm listening to the preacher right now. Because faith does not come by reading faith comes by hearing and what you're hearing tonight is increasing your faith so that what God has for you now has handles on you on it and you can bring it in after a while we're going to bring the singers back and the musicians back because see I got to pull some things in I don't know about you but I have to I have to pull some things in. And I believe all of you all are going to help me pull it in. Because that's when I pull mine in, we're going to pull yours in. Because if you have faith, we're all working together tonight.
I said, if you have faith, we're all working together tonight. We're all trusting the same God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God. Touch your neighbor. Tell him he's the same God. Stay with me. It is the foundation that makes life worth living. It's the foundation that makes life worth living. Whenever you begin to feel like life is not worth living, you've lost your faith. Whenever my battles have gotten the best of me, I've lost my faith. Whenever my critics' words start coming to pass, I've lost my faith. Because when I have faith, I can trust God that life is worth living. How are you going to get me to be suicidal when I can see my future? I can see where I'm going even where I am right now. It may be problems where I am right now, but right over the hill or right around the turn, I can see my blessing. I can see my breakthrough. I can see my financial breakthrough. I can see my miracle in my body. I can see my miracle in my marriage. That's right over the hill. And if I can see over the hill, I'm going to get there. See, what you don't understand is that faith causes you to reach a destination that your friends around you don't see yet, but you see it. And they don't understand why you're excited. I'm excited because of what I see. You have, well, we can't see it because you don't have faith. Well, I have faith, so I see something beyond my moment. And my moment now is not my worst moment because I'm turning it into my best moment because of what I see on the other side. So depression, back off. I am now seeing on the other side. I can't have low self-esteem. I see myself in greatness. Okay. okay. All right. So, so now I, I'm working. I'm working on my faith, this foundation of faith that makes life worth living. I want to live. I want to live. Dennis, I want to live. I want to live. You want to know why? Because there's some ahead of me better than what's going on right now. So I want to live. You need to slap your neighbor. Tell him, I want to live. I don't care if you just lost your job. I don't care if your business just went under. You got to want to live. I don't care if your spouse left you. You got to want to live. I don't care if your children are rebelling. You got to want to live. Life is worth living when you have faith. There's always a better day coming when you have faith. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What am I doing? I'm going to have faith when I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. When my mother passed, I was walking through the valley, but I believe I was going to get another mother. I... When my father passed, I was walking through the valley, but I believe that I will get a spiritual father. I'm telling you right now, no matter what you're walking through right now, if you have faith, you're only going to stay in that valley for a certain period of time. But how many of you have mountaintop faith in this place to believe that your valley experience is coming to an end right now? I believe that God is able to do anything but fail. See, I look so good, people think I don't go through anything. You can't be called and not have an experience where you have to use your faith. And I think we made ministry so easy that people think they can do ministry without faith. And I came to tell you from all the way from Birmingham, Alabama, you can't do ministry well without faith. Go ahead and drop out. But if you're going to have faith, you're going to make it to your destination. I don't care what hell is coming against your life. You are going to make it. ready to pull it in so life becomes more valuable and worth waking up in the morning my times has changed since I've been here but I'm still happy to wake up I'm still happy to wake up why because life is worth living yeah I failed yesterday that means I'm getting double today <laughs> <laughs> 
Life is worth living. Anything the devil takes, just chalk it up. God is going to do this. Excuse me for saying chalk it up, but y'all know what I'm saying, though. Okay. Just know that God is going to give you double for your trouble. You ever heard that? God is going to give you double for your trouble. So if you came in tonight and you feel like you're facing trouble, you need to start putting your two fingers up and say, God is going to give me double. If God, if the devil takes me through, God's going to take me over. Because no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I believe that. So every weapon that's formed against me got to make me. It has to make me because if it's formed against me and cannot prosper, then it's got to take me through my process. And when I come on the other side of my process, it's elevation time. So you want to know why I'm on this platform? I made it through my process through faith. And if you make it through your process through faith, you'll be standing in an elevated place and you think the low place. We despise not the days of small beginnings. I want to tell somebody God's about to take you somewhere and the message this conference is to get you ready for where you going and not where you are listen 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 y'all still here y'all are so attentive is it y'all or is it my faith because I was believing while I was sitting there that I would captivate the audience See, you have to believe like that. And everybody's eyes are on me. My faith is working. My faith is growing because I got y'all right where God wants you to be. I believe that this service is going to be one of the greatest services of this entire year. You want to know why? Because I got your attention through faith. And if you would just reach your faith back, I put handles on you and said, we're going to move and we're going to be focused. Why don't you just reach out and grab a hold of the handles and say, the word of God is going to work for me. It worked last night. It's going to work tonight, and it's going to work the rest of the conference. All you got to do is reach your hands out and grab a hold of it. Your neighbor may not understand what you're doing, but you know what you're doing right now. And you're pulling everything that God promised you through his word. You're pulling it in. Listen, listen. So now that life is worth living, life is not worth living without faith in God. So I can gain many things, but God is the only one that can keep what I gain. You have to be careful when you only focus on increasing. Because if you only focus on increase, can you maintain the increase without faith? See, you can't, and I see many people, I've been passing 22 years, I see so many people that get blessed and then stop using their faith like they have arise. I can't get to that place. Because see, there's an enemy on the other side of the hill that wants to take what God just gave me. But everything that I have has my name on it. But the enemy across the hill doesn't know its identity. So he think he can drive my car, live in my house, and have my wife. The devil is a liar. What God gave me, it is from me and nobody else can have it. I don't care if trouble's in my house. I have enough faith to bring the house back together. Can, can I can I can I can I can I can I address can I address the men just for a moment? I I tried to blame it on my wife, the trouble. <laughs> I started telling God how how rebellious she was, and he didn't say anything. And then I'm like, are you gonna speak? He said, You're the head of the household. Everything that happens in that household is your responsibility. And guess what? I believed him. So guess what happened? I used my faith to bring my household together. I spoke the word of God and it came to pass. So what hell was trying to do in my household, which was my responsibility, because I have a good wife. I, I was just a weak man. But I believe that God can make me a strong man. Don't drop out on me yet, man. I believe that God can make me a strong man even though I was raised in a house without a father in the house and I had no model in the house. But I believe that God could do something with me that my wife and my children would respect and not only would they respect, they will enjoy the blessing that's on my life and on their lives because I manned up. That was all free. I don't need a special offering for that one. Somebody's going to use their faith to cancel out poverty, 
to cancel out the spirit of division and divorce just based on what I just said. I didn't realize I was a man. Now you know that you're a man. And God created you in his image so that you were rule, to do and take dominion. So the next place you're going to take dominion is when you walk through the threshold of your house. You're going to say, this house belongs to me because God gave it to me. And anything that's outside of the word of God, it has to leave right now in the name that's above every name. That is the name Jesus. And if you don't know how to pray, just walk in the house shouting, Jesus! Okay. Stay with me. I feel good. I feel good. Let me, let me, let me, okay. Faith gives you the ability to seize on your unseen blessings. Faith gives you the ability to seize upon your unseen blessing. Don't let me dream. If I dream, when I wake up, I'm looking for what I saw, an image in my dreams about I want it and I want it now. So I'm now using my faith to bring out of the unseen realm because people think he's foolish. He's lost his mind. Wait until you see what I just pulled out of the unseen realm. So you have to pull it out because people think you're crazy. People think faith is crazy. But when they saw, start to see the manifestation of what you've been believing for, all of a sudden they want to join up with you. I want to tell you something. God is going to cause something to happen because your critics are going to be silent starting tonight. I said, your critics are going to be silent starting tonight. When the rest of this campus goes up, the critics are going to be silent. I'm telling you right now, there's something happening in this congregation that's really, really unusual. It really doesn't make sense. We come all the way from the States and walk into something that seems like it's something in the States. You don't know how much impact you guys are having around the world. Everybody's talking about y'all around the world. Why? Because there's a belief system that says we're not confined to one area. And if the ministry is not confined, Confined. The people are not confined. Touch your neighbor. Tell them, I am not confined. Okay. All right. So, so I'm going to seize it. Yeah. Yeah. My healing. I'm going to seize it. I heard what the doctor said. I know he, he scheduled appointments for, for chemo treatment, but I'm going to seize my healing. I heard, I heard that they were putting up a foreclosure sign in front of my house. And I can even see that, but I am seizing debt cancellation on my house. So I, I'm seizing that. I, I know they're looking for my automobile now to seize my automobile, but I am seizing debt cancellation on my automobile. I, I know what they're saying about my children. They, they're disrupting the entire school, but I am going to seize on the opportunity that my child is the best child the school has ever experienced before. You have to seize upon it because when you need God to do something, you can't ask your friends about agreeing with you because they really don't like you so you can't ask them about it. You got to get in a setting like this and be determined that you're going to bleed God no matter what. And when you get in an atmosphere like this, you have to grab a hold of it. You have to seize it so no one can change your mind when you leave out of this place. Look, they, uh, they said there's no way that he can do mega church and he's got a light-skinned wife. They should have told me that before we gained campuses. They should have told me that before we became a mega church. They should have told me that when I was still wondering who I was. So black wife, white wife, Indian wife, African wife, it don't matter. We still going to do the same thing we're doing right now and more. I want to tell you the odds are not against you. I'm telling you God is for you. And if God is for you, you can do anything but fail. I want you to get ready. I want you I need to praise team. Come on, Sasha, come on, because I'm about to wrap this thing up. This is about 32 minutes. It don't take me long. I did redeem some time. I did redeem some time. But I want to tell you that God wants to release something on your life. And th this conference is ordained by God. And I want you to understand something. I believe in what I'm saying. And I want to tell you something else. I believe in what I'm saying because I've seen what I heard from God manifest. So my trust in God is at an all-time high. And I'm living a life that's worth living right now. And I'm not worried about anything. Because no weapon formed against me can prosper. I'm telling you, and if no weapon formed 
formed against me can prosper. No weapon formed against you can prosper. And I want to tell you something else. God is raising, according to the scripture I read, God is raising you up above the crowd. I don't think you heard me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I go a little bit more? I think I have about 45 minutes. I'm at, oh, we're counting down. Do I have 31 minutes left? Oh, you're right. Listen to this. Listen to this. Faith sets you above the crowd. Where'd you get that from, Apostle Davis? Where'd you get that? I got it from Scripture. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 13, it says this. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. So my, no, no matter what I'm doing, ministry, business, school, it doesn't matter. I'm above the crowd. Let, let, me, let, me, help, let me help some of you, and then we're going back up. Let, let me help some of you. Have you ever wondered why you have received a major attack when you feel like you're still in the first grade? The devil's more terrified about where you're going. So if you've been under major attack and you're trying to, well, I'm just an ordinary, everyday person. No, you're not. Because when you start believing, your ordinary days are over. When you start believing, no more average for your life. The thousands of people who are under the sound of my voice, you're not average. Now, see, you're checking, you're checking your circumstances to see if you're average. Check the word. The word changes what you consider normal and average. This is normal. When someone dies, you bury them. Faith says you lay hands on them and raise them up. Don't write out the eulogy too early. Because I believe a rising is in this place right now. I believe resurrection power is in this place right now. God is not going to disappoint you. And I need at least 150 people to jump on your feet and say God is not going to disappoint me. I need you to say it with some authority. God is not going to disappoint me. Come on, one more time. God is not going to disappoint me. I need some of the worshipers to come on up as well. And if God has not disappointed me, God is not going to disappoint you. I perceive that God has no respect of person. So if he'll do it for your father and mother, they're just a commercial of what God is going to do for you. So every time you come into this place, you see a commercial of what God is going to do for you. Because God does exceedingly. God does abundantly. God does above all we can ask or think. I I believe there's enough faith in this room to get the exceedingly, the above. God, I feel something right there. Look, look. Last year, you pumped faith into me that kept me going. And when y'all pumped faith in me, I looked at my surroundings that had not changed. But what, the way I saw myself and the way my family saw themselves, everything changed. We went back to our land and began to dominate. We, we, we birthed two other locations since the last time we were here because we believe through faith and we trust what we hear more than what somebody else said. And we believe that that same anointing. So if I can tap into that in this house, and you're here week in, you're here week out. It's available. It's available. 
You have to, you may have to change your crowd, but it's available. You may have to get another set of friends, but it's available. Anybody that tries to talk you out of what God's saying to you, it's not the right person to be talking to. You need somebody around you to see the potential on the inside of you. You need somebody around you to see that you have not maxed out yet. There's still, there's still more land to possess. There's still more land to possess. There's still more land to possess. I want you to start shouting in the atmosphere because you need to sound like warriors in the atmosphere because faith is arising. The devil thought you were going to settle and then the bishop said that we're going to have a conference and your days of settling are over. And if your days are settling are over, I need you to start stepping outside of where you're sitting right now. And, 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 and Bishop Garn said, you got to move, you got to move. You got to start moving because the enemy wants to confine you. Even in church, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the enemy wants to confine you. Wherever the soles of your feet tread, that shall be your territory. If you see me walking, you know that I'm not coming here to take sides. I'm coming to take over. You're about to take over with your faith. Just start moving. Just start moving. Just start moving. Just start moving. Just, just start moving. Just start moving. Just start moving. Claim your territory. Claim your victory. Claim it now. Claim it now. Pull it in. He can't steal any longer. 